Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Rock Bison from Tiger and Bunny. We're continuing with this line because they have some really cool looking character designs, some cool figures for the most part. You guys have seen, if you've seen, if you haven't, you should see my previous reviews from this line. There's a lot of really cool figures. They're not usually perfect, they have some flaws, but they're really fun to have and really cool to look at. So I'm happy to show you more of them. I think you guys can get most of these for really good prices. If you click the link in the description below, they're mostly under 50 bucks, which is pretty good for an import, especially a big one like this guy. Anyway, uh, shameless plug there, but it's true. You can get them from Big Bad Toy Store for really good prices. So check it out. I know a lot of you have already gotten some. So anyway, let's look at the figure. That's what you're here for. It's a really cool figure. It has some serious problems. Um, probably more than most of the other Tiger and Bunny figures, but I think the coolness makes up for most of them. So let's get him off the stand so you guys can take a closer look. This guy stands roughly seven and a half inches to the top of his horns, which makes him just about 19 centimeters. So what he lacks in accessories, he makes up for in size. You guys know most of the Tiger and Bunny figures have had some pretty cool accessories. This guy doesn't have any other than some hands, really. So uh, it, it's not that much, but let's take a look at what he does have. So you can see he has these two fist hands, which are nicely sculpted. We also have open hands like this, one for either side. They look the same on both sides. He also comes with an interchangeable neck tube. You see that neck tube? We've got a smaller one also. So if you need a smaller one for a various pose, for various poses, you can do that. It is a flexible tube, so Kind of like those tubes that used to come with Legos. You know those tubes? That's what this is like. Anyway, he also comes with a base. They always have these cool bases, which I think is fantastic. I love translucent plastic, and these look cool. And they have the character name on them. So I wish all figure arts had that. That'd be awesome. You could have a really cool looking display that way. But I wouldn't use the bases anyway. Anyway, okay, let's go. I need sleep. Let's look at this figure. He's really big. He does have die cast parts. And he's really cool looking. Some of the articulation is... I feel like whoever designed this was on some kind of mental stimulant or something. Because it's, it's wonky. But let's take a look. Well, first, let's look at the paint. Lots of paint. It looks really cool. It does look metallic because there's a little tiny hint of metal flake in all of that olive green. So that's cool. The gold is obviously metallic. And then this brownish, blackish color, tiny hint of metal also. Very cool looking all around. The paintwork on here looks like somebody painted it on there, so that looks really nice. And then all the little details. You see some silver in the belt buckle, some silver up in here. Nice detail work throughout the face. This guy's actually uh, a separate piece, so no paint issues there. You can see some more paint work around the back with the buckles and straps and things. Very cool, very well done figure. Now, articulation wise, this is where we're gonna have a problem. I'm gonna pop this off just because it tends to pop off anyway. And I need to show you this. This head articulation, I've never seen anything quite like this. We've got this double joint, if I can even show you. So it, go, oh, it won't go. We have this weird swiveling mechanism in the bottom, then we have a hinge here, another hinge in the back, and a ball peg at the top. I don't know why you need that. Is that from the show? Does his head do that in the show? Is it part of like, he can ram people with his head so it does that? I don't know. That's a really weird joint if it's not show accurate. If it is, then fine, and you can just rotate it around and leave it if you don't want it to look weird, but it's, uh, it's a very, very strange design. And that kind of mentality continues to the shoulders. You have a big ball peg that you can move the entire shoulder around. It looks like the socket should move too. It, it looks like it should, but it, I can't get them to move. So it might, but they're frozen, I don't know. But we have that ball peg. And then we have like two other joints inside the shoulder for some reason. It just moves all over the place. And this one gold piece kind of just floats in there but it doesn't really accomplish anything. The only thing you're really getting much out of is that main ball peg, which is fine, but you can't bring the shoulders up. You can only really rotate them and lean them like that. So it's it's very weird. I'm not sure what what they were going for with this guy. It's very strange. And then this arm, 
or this part of the arm, the bicep swivel hinge thing is just a ball peg going down to that brown piece. So that just moves around all willy nilly. And then down here we have another ball peg. So you get kind of 90 degrees out of it, but not really. And straightening it makes it look like his arms kind of mushed. So very strange. The whole thing's weird. Then we have a ball peg for the hand. That's fairly normal. It'll move around in there and this piece is hinged. So it'll move a little bit as well. Single ball peg for the torso. It gives you some good range. It does tend to pop off really easily. So be careful uh, with that. But you get some good range out of it. Lower torso also has a single ball peg. Skirt pieces have hinges going out to either side. This one has a double hinge. So you can fold it a little bit or you can do that with it. Which I'm not, I'm not sure you're going to ever need to do that. But you can. The hips are pretty standard. They have the hinged ball peg. You can't probably see in there very well, but hinged ball peg, a little bit of a thigh swivel, decent enough range. They'd have plenty of range if it wasn't for the skirt. However, the really heavy, large feet, problematic for the hips. Watch out for that. Double jointed knee works pretty standard. Works nicely, no problems there. And then for the ankle, we have our standard ball hinge. It's a big one and you can rotate it around so you get as much of an ankle rocker as you want, no problems there. And then for the toes, I don't know what's going on with the toes. It's um, this really weird extending hinge. The way the hinge is designed, it actually pulls the foot forward and creates this weird gap. It's like a double hinge, like, I don't know. Is that from the show also? Is that a thing that his feet do that for the spikes maybe? I don't know. It's just weird. It's a cool figure, very weird. Uh, you guys will enjoy it, but you're going to have to uh, finagle it a little bit to get it in the poses you want. Uh, I don't know, it's very weird. But it looks really cool and is mostly well done, so I guess I recommend it. If you watch the show and you like the character, grab it. It's a cool figure, it's just very, very weird. So there it is. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. In the meantime, keep collecting. Keep collecting.